Trade season is officially upon us in the hockey world, as we've recently seen players such as Ben Sherratt, Frank Vetrano, and Josh Manson all being moved to cup contenders. But since the deadline is still days away, this is likely only the beginning, giving us several topics to cover. In this video, we're going to turn back to a few players that we previously spoke on, give updates on their situations, and cover one player that we haven't spoken about this season. And with that, here are four NHL players who could be moved this deadline and where they may end up. Just hours after this video releases, longtime Philly captain Claude Giroux will be playing in his 1000th NHL game. For Giroux, it's going to be a tremendous accomplishment to reflect on and celebrate with teammates as the Flyers host the Nashville Predators. However, amid the festivities, one thing that will definitely be on Giroux's mind is his eventual fate this deadline. As a forward has been in the center of trade rumors for months now, and for good reason. Seasoned with experience and fiercely competitive, Giroux has proven to be among the best that his generation has had to offer. And an article from The Athletic compared Giroux's situation to that of Jerome Aginlis of 2013, a respected veteran who was highly accomplished in his own rights and also in complete control of his fate. Aginlis, similarly to Giroux, proved to be loyal to one organization until the latter part of his career when he knew he had to chase a cup elsewhere. However, I think it's a fair statement to say that Giroux won't be being traded to the Pittsburgh Penguins. According to Elliot Friedman and a week of source below, the top teams that have been in the mix for Giroux have been the Colorado Avalanche, Florida Panthers, and the St. Louis Blues. I did recently ask you all what you thought at the time this video was being made, and a large majority said the Colorado Avalanche. What we know about Giroux besides that he's an incredibly skilled to a forward, hence a wizard on the faceoffs, is that he's versatile, meaning that he can play at center or wing. This is an asset that teams will welcome that have multiple needs within their top six. Recently, we witnessed Joe Sackick kicking things off as the Josh Manson trade was likely the catalyst for other GMs to follow suit. And as many insiders are indicating, the Nico Sturm Tyson Yost trade isn't the last move that Sakic will make this deadline. With Gabriel Lind Skog and Sam Girard moving to the LTIR, this will be freeing up additional cap space to potentially use in a Giroux acquisition. The captain would likely slot in on the first line until Landeskog's return and could even be centering the third line in the postseason, giving Colorado the ultimate edge against opposing teams. Even though he could end up elsewhere, for most, myself included, Colorado still makes the most sense. While we have talked about Toronto's goaltending needs quite a bit lately, another area that Kyle Dubas will probably be addressing is Toronto's blue line. Knowing that Jake Muzzin won't be returning for the team anytime soon, if the Maple Leafs are serious about winning a playoff round, they're going to need some reinforcements on the back end. With names such as Ben Sherratt, Josh Manson, and potentially John Klingberg off the table as options, the market is going to be rather slim. One player that Toronto has been tied to now for quite some time is Seattle captain, Mark Giordano. Interestingly, the defenseman was a healthy scratch for the Kraken against Tampa Bay. Therefore, this suggests that a trade is imminent and could be happening before the 21st. An article from Sportsnet really builds a hefty case for Gio and suggests that he could be the best option for the Leafs to target. Knowing that, he wouldn't be relied upon to run a power play or to play top pairing minutes. Sliding him in on the second pairing could help stabilize Toronto's back end, which is something they could use. Within the past month, for instance, Toronto has a allowed the second most goals league-wide. Now part of that is goaltending no doubt, but having an experienced blue liner who can help kill penalties and minimize the shots against is something that could greatly help Toronto. The undrafted captain, who has recently reached the 1000th game milestone, would also be adding some intangibles to the roster of leadership and playoff experience. If there are multiple teams bidding for the defenseman's services, he could demand a first round pick. If not, then possibly a second rounder and a prospect combo would suffice. Last video for the first time this season, we entertained the possibility of longtime Red Wing Tyler Bertuzzi being dealt to the Steel City. While Bertuzzi would make sense for Ron Hextall and company, who are in need of secondary scoring, another team that Bertuzzi could greatly benefit this postseason is the Boston Bruins. Just thinking about it, the junkyard dog, aka Bertuzzi, seems like the type of player that would fit like a glove in Boston. His scrappiness and antagonistic like nature on ice really seem like qualities that the bee would welcome with open arms. He 
He's also versatile, therefore he could center the second line or offer support on wing as well. Boston has a player that could appeal to Detroit and Jake DeBrusque considering his offensive resurgence this season. For Steve Eisenman, dealing Bertuzzi could give a similar return that he got for Anthony Mantha last season, since Bertuzzi has been more productive with 48 points in 50 games played. He would commend picks as well. Bertuzzi also has term left on his deal as he will be a pending UFA in 2023. The trade would save Detroit a little money in the long run due to DeBrusque's cap hit being cheaper, but he is an RFA which could prove to be challenging futuristically. Even still, if he did receive, say, a first round pick and another pick or prospect, you would have to think that Iserman would at least entertain the possibility of a deal. Lastly, an interesting player that's found his way into trade talks more recently is Craig Anderson. Since returning from injury, the netminder has put up decent numbers for Buffalo as he's currently sporting a .907 save percentage and a 2.96 goals against average. Definitely not visiting conversation numbers, but considering his very modest $750,000 cap hits, contending teams will likely be showing interest in the 40-year-old goaltender. According to NHL insider Pierre Lebrun, he expects multiple teams to be inquiring about Anderson. Anderson services. Also, according to LeBron, the Sabres will only be trading Anderson where and if he wants to be dealt. A few teams that could try to land Anderson include Minnesota, Toronto, and Edmonton. All three teams have had major issues in net as of late, but may not want to be sacrificing the hefty price that Marco De Fleury would command. If Edmonton thinks that they are a true contender and don't want to leverage their first round pick, then Anderson could be the answer in the crease. If the Sabres considered taking on Miko Koskinen contract in exchange, then it would give Ken Holland some cap flexibility and also potentially address Buffalo's need for a starter next season. Koskinen, who carries a $4.5 million cap hit, is also a pending UFA and has a modified no-trade clause with a 15-team no-trade list. With the prospect of being a starter on a team filled with promise, Koskinen just might agree to move to Saberland after all. For Edmonton, it would give them some added insurance and net and someone to take the reins if Mike Smith gets injured in the postseason.